Hot button. Um, here we have the slide. So this is the interim for the rip. Uh, Daniel, I don't see anything. Here. Oh, you don't see anything. OK, good. So I'm sharing this application. Trying to find the right application. Let's take this one. That is me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I can put the tab out. So hopefully I can check the chats. And you can see the not wells now. Good. Yes. All is good. So please, oh, so this is the interim meeting for the RIP. Um, please note the note well. So if you're not familiar with those, let the, let the chair know um, if you have any questions. Um, logistics. So minute takers, we have Shui. Um, uh, the minutes are here. Um, please register. So um, the link should be on. The, I cannot copy. Well, it's not what I intended to do, but um, let's register here. Do we have anyone on Jabber? I don't see anyone on Jabber. Given that we are very a, a very little number of participants, we may use the Cisco chat as well. Um, so yeah, everyone register. I'm registering. For example, okay. So let's start um, is, with the architecture and requirement draft. Um, anyone has anything to say? Any agenda bashing? No. So let's move to, to the meet. Yeah, we, we, we have first a point about the architectural draft before we move to, uh, to the requirement. So if you, you can just show the uh, display this line the, the share slides when we have the, uh, oh, okay. the information about the architecture drafts okay yeah yeah so, so, so for, for this one we, we have seen some i would say some comment on the list about the uh, whether we need to merge i would say the architecture and the solution drafts I think this is something that was raised by uh, Ms. Stewart. Um, yeah, as chairs, we don't, we don't, we are not. I would, I, we don't think it's it's a good idea to have, I would say, to merge the uh, the solution documents with the architecture that we want really to uh, to be a reference document so that the people who are working on Drip to understand the, really the scope of what we are doing, and also this will is uh, grafting, I would say, the individual solution to uh, to to, uh, to the uh, architecture. Um, so we um, we really yeah really recognize I would say the important effort that uh, made by by Seward on I would say on the past versions of this um, of this document, and we would like I would say to balance the effort in the various documents we have so far. So we have Adam who is working on the authentication and the claims document, Bob on the um, on the SRID, and Seward on the requirements. So we thought that it would be really good if um, we have someone else with fre fresh ideas and fresh eyes on the um, on the uh, act uh, draft. So um, um, we have um, um, asked Shua if he uh, he can accept to uh, to take the uh, the lead on this one. Uh, so he um, he is really okay, and this is a, a good news, so that he he can take the um, the editor lead on the uh, architectural draft. So the, the will the um, the next step for this one is is mainly to to prepare it for the working of last call. Um, there will be more iterations for that one before we uh, we can be ready. But we would like to really to maintain i would say this one as a separate item and um, if you disagree with this i would say with this um, uh, with this approach or if you prefer to um, otherwise please um, it's time to uh, to speak on, on on this one so 
So, um, yeah, I was confused by the presentation on the architecture draft and requirements, but architecture, um, we, we don't have a new iteration, do we? We, we have only a major one, but um, yeah, the uh, the major okay. revision will be uh, for the O5. Um, but okay. yeah, it's, this is this is the plan. Yeah, this is what we discussed with the editors. Okay, so that's good. Um, it. I mean, uh, when do you think we we could have this um, um, major revision being done? Uh, okay. Hopefully, after the ITF, for example. I can't speak for Shuai, but I was planning on continuing to work on it for the next few days. Um, and I, okay. I, 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 um, I, I accede to the majority desire to not merge it with um, other documents, but I just want to make sure everybody is aware that we don't actually get to define the gen generic architecture. It's been defined by regulators and SDOs external to IETF. So the choice that is open to us is we can either create our own IETF oriented digest of the definition that has already occurred externally and call that our architecture, or we can proceed to solution specific architectures. But the generic high level architecture is already a done deal from the regulators and, and other SDOs. Yeah, sure. So, um, my understanding is that you, what you probably have to, to see is that every pieces that we will define, so it includes the RID, but it also includes the authentication firmware, but it also includes the registries with the DNS, for example. Um, all these pieces have to be linked somehow together. And I, my guess is that the architecture document should be um, it's not, it's, I mean, I would say defining, defining, but um, it's not going to be a normative document. So it's an informational document so that anyone does understand where the different pieces we define in this working group, how they work together. That's really the purpose of the architecture document. It should not be something highly generic. Um, it should not try to attempt to redigest everything that has been said in different SDOs. Um, it's really fine to, meant to start your document saying, um, I mean, the architecture is no, um, I mean, there is a normative architecture being defined in this and this document that are outside of the ITF. Um, and um, there is a middle ground between having something which is very specific to your solution, to something um, a little bit uh, highly generic. Um, I think in our case, because we only have one um, uh, solution, we we can we can afford the, um, not to be too generic, but we should not try to um, it, 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 architecture a, a document uh, expected to be a little bit um, conceptual in the sense that. Um, we are not trying to have a global document that is uh, going to repeat our ID, authentication framework, and so on. Um, so is that a little bit clear what the goals are? That sounds great. And I'm glad uh, that Shuai has uh, found the time to step up to provide some relief. And I want to um, Remind everybody that Andre also uh, volunteered to, to help with this, and he's been stymied by my lack of providing him with what he needed to to get started. So my focus for the next 36 hours is going to be making sure that all the co-authors and Shuai in particular have all of the inputs that I have received, and hopefully Shuai can, can figure out how to sort them out. <laughs> t t t thank you. Thank you very much, Seward, on this. And my is the uh, is Eric here. I'll be working to contribute text to Shai as well and, and helping out as, as, as I can. Well, thanks. Uh, this is a straight. Um, thanks to, I think I, when I said a yes to to Daniel and Matt, I, I was a thought that uh, uh, no, it's it's going to be rewrite. I mean, I think, I think at, at the beginning when we started the architecture draft, uh, the initial idea should be uh, generic. Uh, now I think it's it's not right. 
because at this moment the the architecture traffic is all it's only including the generic uh, concept and as 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 Stu mentioned already uh, the the uh, we did not define the architecture the, the the architecture is already there i mean as a informational draft i think the the draft itself the content is already is kind of mature and now um because i wasn't clear at the moment uh, by what uh Mac meant to 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 include the um uh, read and all of the solution space um so uh, just kind of want to clarify with everyone is is um is it the idea for the draft uh for the architecture draft is really including it's kind of like integration piece over the whole um drip which is going to be including the uh you know it's going to be including the uh uh, the design of the RAID and how the RAID will be used in the uh, network architecture. Yeah, yeah. J just before before giving the uh, the floor to uh, to Eric too, because he he has asked to um yeah the uh, the comment. Just one comment, uh, sure. We are not changing the scope of the draft. We are just helping the the team to move forward. So that means that you, you need to what what we have. You have a list of comments and the that need to be uh, to be implemented, and then you're you're in your in your role. You will you will help moving and implementing this this comment. So. To, uh, that's the the point I want to make. Eric, please. Yeah, so sorry, first, I would like to apologize for joining late. Uh, this call by a few minutes. So I'm as part of the Stu presentation and just arrived at the point where Stu, you were probably, and uh, we've quotes around it because I arrived late. You probably said that the drip architecture is coming from another SDO, assuming it's FAA. Is it correct? It's primarily coming from ASTM, which is being cited by FAA and ESA, but there is also work in 3GPP and elsewhere. Okay, so uh, I took a shortcut, but basically it's standardized from another SDO. You really need to be clear into the document to state this. Right, it is coming from another SDO. It is a slightly different process. And Ron says you are in the call correctly if I'm on there. And now I also wonder what is the role of the requirements document if the architecture is based on another SDO? Yeah, I'm right there again, right? I could give my thoughts on that, but I don't know whether everyone is in agreement. Um, my thought is that what has been defined externally provides pretty much only an identity. It fails in two respects. It doesn't make that trustworthy and it doesn't make it immediately useful for much of anything. And so okay. the requirements for drip go beyond the requirements for narrowly simply providing an unverified ID to making it a trustworthy ID and making it something that can be immediately put to use to establish communications or look things up in a database or whatever. Okay, so Stu, thank you for the clarification. I guess it's my late arrival and it's, I failed to get this. So the architecture from the drip, part of it is only coming from ASTM. All the rest is coming from the ATF working group. Is it correct? I guess that's a good way to put it. Okay, then I'm fine. Sorry. Thank you. I would just add a little bit to this that the requirements is what this work group, what we see the ITF can contribute to what ASTM and FAA use space and others have defined because ASTM has not gone so far into the USS UTM arena and we're looking at a small piece of that puzzle in terms of the registry portion the, the lookup um, um, portion. So we're maybe going a little beyond what's in the ASTM documents. So touched on some of the, in some of the ASTM documents. Uh, so uh, yes, we are looking outside of us, but what is our contribution? So the architecture should be what it is that the ITF is bringing to the table into this large framework. And the requirements that mirror that. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, just one more comment. I, I think um, Shui mentioned um, whether the architecture document should only I mean, uh, put the glue between the documents we are providing at the ITF. Um, I think that's it's it's only one part of the thing that should be provided, but we should also um, make it possible. I mean, when a new I mean, the, the architecture document should not be. It's basically a starting document, so um, it, it doesn't need all the document to be finalized. And um, new documents might be um, uh, created after the architecture document um, is uh, published. So um, just uh, one clarification. Um, are we done with the architecture questions, comments, thoughts? I mean, it, it's the right time to to provide them. I, I did have two quick slides on Arch in the deck. Okay, yeah. So uh, are they in the beginning or? They're at the beginning oh, after yeah. the joke. Okay, so I, I, you start with a joke then. <laughs> so I'm guessing that at least those of us who've been around for a few years had seen this joke. The earliest reference I found to it was from like 1993 on this uh, site that I've linked. And just, just jump to the bottom line. Um, all the other stuff that's out there about RID provide a nominally correct answer. We try to provide a trustworthy and immediately useful answer. And to Eric's earlier points, this is how DRIP goes beyond narrow UAS RID as specified externally. Next slide. So here are the few small changes that I made to three to produce four, which I released at like four o'clock this morning. Um, and the, uh, the one that I'd like to emphasize is there's been a lot of back and forth about is IP in there or not? And the answer is it is in there on network remote ID. It is not currently in there on broadcast remote ID due to the constraints of the specified data links, but it could be in broadcast remote ID in the future. And also that ADSB has been explicitly prohibited for this application by regulators for technical reasons that are now in the draft. Next slide. And this is all that I have not done, but I have just uh, shared with the co-authors and with Shuai um, the four or five slides that have all of these inputs. And I will within the next 24 to 36 hours share all the inputs that are in several dozen emails of such that I have. And that's all I have to say about Arch. Thank you. Okay, so um, yeah, so for, for, for the people, um, I'm not, I mean, in my case, for the reviews, I'm not asking a response for any reviews I provide. I think, um, I mean, um, when you're editing the document, take all the reviews and, um, we will provide the next reviews um, later on. So, I mean, I think the 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 what should be prioritized is to have an 05 version. Requirements. Do you want me to proceed? Yeah, 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 sure. Okay. So this long uh, laundry list is all of the things that uh, have been done to requirements 04 in the last month to yield requirements 05. Um, well, let's see, what here should be highlighted? Um, the, the, the second bullet, the whole document has been massively restructured because there was a lot, the, the introduction was ridiculously long and had a lot of details in it. The problem space was rather short. And so a lot of the stuff moved from one into three and it's better organized uh, thanks to Amelia and uh, Michael Richardson in particular. Um, and I did a lot with terminology, um, added some more ASCII art uh, to try to uh, help people understand uh, the, the, the externally specified architecture. Um, did some clarifications. 
um, expanded the security considerations because Michael Richardson had pointed out that our that there were a couple of general requirements and, and an ID requirement or two from which he was able to infer sub requirements, which he um, you know pointed out would be difficult to meet in the case of broadcast RID with an observer who did not at that time have internet connectivity. So that is all now in security considerations. Um, any questions on this? Okay, next slide. Okay, there were three things that had been suggested by one or more individuals on which we did not have working group consensus to rename the document to remove definitions of terms that we didn't use in that document, even though we were likely to use them in other drip documents. Uh, and to weaken any of the privacy requirements, then there were five suggestions that had been made that I just plain don't know how to do. Um, I, I don't know how to make the drip scope any clearer than we have attempted to make it. Um, and further, the scope is really defined in the charter of the working group, not in the requirements document. Um, I don't know how to say the multicast requirement any more clearly than I've said it. Um, I gave a definition of AAA, which actually has seven terms rather than three, because it has been my experience that every author picks a different three of those seven terms. And so to verify that, I took all of the seven choose three permutations of those terms, Googled every one of them, and discovered that every one of them has broad support, although couple of orders of magnitude difference in popularity of the different subsets of three. So I left that definition alone. I didn't attempt to define authentication or any of the other words in AAA, and I didn't attempt to define RID service. And that's a great embarrassment to me because um, I know what a RID service is, um, but that is intuitively from having read lots of documents and working in the field, I do not find RID service actually defined explicitly anywhere. And so I cannot cite such a definition. Then there were four suggestions that were made that I, I just plain didn't agree with. And if, um, you know, if, if the working group wants to direct me to do them, then I'll do them. But it, it was my editorial judgment that it didn't make sense to define terms like data dictionary, which I believe are well-defined terms. Um, I also do not want to try to justify the decisions that have been made externally, nor do I want to embed in the requirements document parameter values that have been chosen externally and those external choices are likely to change in the future. Um, I really don't want to remove facilitating vehicle to whatever communications and its various applications from the drip scope, because if we do, then we're taking away the whole idea of drip making a remote ID immediately useful rather than simply an end in itself. And finally, I don't want to remove the brief description of the discovery and synchronization service and the UAS traffic management system, because I do not believe that RID can be understood without that context. And then finally, um, Bob did a review of Dash 05 um, two days ago, which obviously that review is not in Dash 05. It would have to be in Dash 06 if we feel that an 06 is a worthwhile thing to do at this point. Bob has uh, agreed that most of these things um, are minor, um, but one thing that may be significant is he's suggesting maybe we need some more ASCII art because there's more than one variation on uh, how the data flow may go in uh, network remote ID. So I'd like to pause here and open the floor to uh, any yelling and screaming about these things that I didn't do. This is Adam here. Um, yeah. I should probably not click on a thing and start putting spaces everywhere. Um, I just want to point, Stu, if Casey's not paying attention to the chat, because there's some good comments in the chat from Eric, Karsten, and Alex here. Um, but I'm of the agreement, I think, with Alex that AAA is about access control at IETS specifically. And I'm tainted because of work I've done. I'm more versed in other areas. So I see AAA as the full seven terms. So I can't really say much on that. So I agree with the editor here. Um, you, DT, the DSS UTM, I agree with the reluctance. Remote ID is being added to UTM. So it's kind of hard.
I guess if that was everything everybody wanted to say at this moment, probably people who have further opinions can express them on the list. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, here are the actual numbered requirements changes. There were massive changes to the document going from four to five, but there were minimal changes to the numbered requirements, which makes me very happy. Um, apparently, people did have a pretty good consensus on you know where the rubber ultimately meets the road. Um, I had abbreviated end to end as E to E. I spelled that out because it was only used once in the whole document anyway. Um, I had inserted the um, unnecessary and potentially misleading word sensitive and struck that. Um, we now have a um, specific language for the scope of uniqueness. Um, there were a couple of requirements that said uh, that you either must not or must, in the case of public and private respectively, restrict access based upon the identity of who was asking the question, and that was expanded to identity or role. It's not that I'm Stu, it's that I'm the editor or, or whatever. Um, also, um, we're periodically reminded that uh, my writing tends to be US-centric, and uh, U-Space is a broader and more aggressive concept uh, from Europe than UTM. And in the case of uh, registry requirement three, it was appropriate to um, cite U-Space as well as the narrower UTM. And those are all of the changes um, to the numbered requirements. And I think that's my last slide. Okay, good. Um, well, the thing I'm a little bit um, I think we sh we might spend um, um, uh, um, a few minutes discussing those uh, changes that have not been done, um, just so th that you get um, a feedback from the working group. What I'm afraid is that if we bring back to the mailing list, um, I mean it's it's going to stall for a long time. So I'm wondering if there are any comments that can be helpful to move the document move forward. So, um, I mean, uh, do we want to discuss, I mean, renaming the document, is that something? No, I, I, I think that, that fairly that Stewart has sent a long list of the, I would say of how the, he handled the comments to the list. It's more than two, two weeks right now. And we, didn't see any follow up to that to that I would say to that message from from Stewart. So uh, the, the plan I, I, I would personally tempted to to suggest is that Stewart prepare a new revision of the draft to to take into account I would say the pending issues that are not into the this version, and then see uh, any comments that we will have by then and run a, a one week last last call to check that all tanks are are there and then we can ship the document to um, to uh, to Eric. Okay, so I mean. What we are expecting is that um, people get um, in 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 the next week, or let's say by the ITF, um, people get um, the time to review the document as it is now. Is that what you're proposing, Matt? What I'm proposing is that uh, Stewart has some, I would say, some pending changes to to be um, to be yet addressed and implemented in the document. And once we have that document ready, then we can do a last check on the um, from the working group. So the only ones that are actually in my queue at this moment are the very last line on this slide, um, based upon Bob's review of Dash 05, which is the only explicit review of the document that I received. And Bob has said that all of these are minor and he could live with the document as is. Bob's online, so he can correct me if I'm wrong, except possibly for the ASCII art. Um, the ASCII art may require revision or the insertion of a couple more document, uh, a couple more diagrams, because I have shown network RID in the contemplated primary scenario for data flow, but there are other possible data flows besides the one I illustrated. And I think that way some delivery services are going to be are looking at this. Um, we need to reflect that, and that's why I had in my comment um, that there may be direct from the UA from the, from that delivery drone to, for the network ID communication to their LT connection um, that they're going to undoubtedly have or 5G connection. 
So uh, that's why I specifically have that one change in there, Stu. Um, and I think that's important. That's the one area which needs to be um, captured, um, and, and uh, that can be part of the, uh, the the final work group review, and then go into a uh, final work group document. Okay, so um, maybe one um, one question I would have for um, Stu is. Um, do you have something that you can't live with that document as it is, and you would would like uh, guidance right now from the printing group? Well, so the the second section there, things that I haven't done because I don't know how to satisfy the reviewer's concern. If if anybody here has a strong opinion on any of those five points, including how to achieve the goal, I would appreciate that input and I would make the change. Uh, sans any such input, uh, I'm okay with the document as is. I acknowledge Bob's concern that my um, network grid data flow um, doesn't cover all of the permutations. So that it, to, to me, that is the largest uh, issue. And I have some thoughts on the RID service point uh, because this is a regulator driven and why the regulators want a RID service. I think we can get, the two of us can work out some wording on that um, fairly quickly, Stu. Yeah. Um, okay, so if we don't have any huge concerns, um, I think you can continue the conversation with Bob. I still believe that, um, I, I mean, we, we don't expect in the next version some huge changes from what we have now. And if that's the case, um, it's an invitation to the people to have a look at the document, to review it, so that we can, and say if they agree with the document or not, so that we can ship it, um, let's say, by ITF, next ITF. Does it sound like a plan? Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still not clear on whether you want me to proceed with addressing things now and, and upload that in a few days, or if you want me to let five hang out there um, until after a next phase of review. I think as uh, I mean, what you can do now, I mean, um, version of three. So as, uh, as soon as you get, you agree with Bob and you address Bob concerns, um, please upload the new version. And, um, but, um, it should not be, um, it should not prevent people. what I would like to avoid is that people waiting for that new version to start reviewing and, um, I, 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 what I would like is that we got most of the reviews of the document uh, prior to the ITF. Great. Yeah, the document that is out there will be fundamentally the same document after um, satisfying uh, what Bob has raised. Yeah. So it should be reviewed in its current form. Yeah. And just to check on some dates. So the deadline completion update before the ITF is next Monday, midnight European time, UTC time. A lot of time, and then typically the last call uh, around the ATF time is three weeks and not two weeks, just to allow people to get more time. Besides, it is perfectly fine. And the question to be asked at some point of time: Do we want to publish the architecture and the requirements all together? I, I mean, um, it would be good, but I don't see that necessary. And uh, maybe I, I would. Try to well, I would probably send. I mean, this is me. Med might disagree with me, but um, I don't care sending a document to Eric as soon as possible. But um, I, I would understand that Eric says, um, yeah, I prefer to have the architecture document ready because that's easier to read and understand the requirement document. And, and that's basically my point. You got it right, Daniel. So <laughs> So most surely what will happen, and it will be 
my decision, right, at before launching the ITF last call to the complete community is to get the two documents together as one, I mean, they are twins, right? You cannot really understand one without reading the other. They need to go together. Yeah. yeah and I the think... same thing for the ISG evaluation. Specifically, if there are just a couple of weeks difference. Now, if it's six months, nine months, like some working group, then of course you don't do this. But in this case, it's so close together regarding the timing and the state of the document that's, that's better to do it like this. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I agree with that. So we agree that um, we need to have that document ready and we keep it um, we, ke we keep it until the architecture document is going to be ready b before we send all the two documents to Eric. Is that fine for the working group? And this is a show. And when will that be? Uh, do we have an ETA for that a rough date? When you're ready. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's why I'm asking. When do we want it? <laughs> yeah, in uh, shortly after the next ITF. Let's say, um, um, I mean, uh, December. I expect that both documents should be shipped. December. Okay. So December. it means uh, if you can be ready uh, mid November, it's good. So on my side, November is really tough for me. I have a two meetings to cover. Um, December makes sense to me. Okay, good. Then we will wait for December. And I'm going to strive to get uh, Bob's uh, changes to five in by the Monday deadline, so that can be um, in for this uh, upcoming November IETF meeting. Okay, good. Uh, just one quick comment for Stu, um, just really for the first bullet, clarify drip scope uh, in the requirement. Um, I don't understand why we needed to clarify scope in the requirement. It should be in the charter, right? If people have a issues to understand the scope, just refer to the charter. I don't think we should uh, do any clarification in the requirement. Then. Does that make sense to you, though? Um, I. I... I understand the drip scope as the architecture. <laughs> okay, so that 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 should be move, moved to the architecture. Yeah, I mean the architecture document might um, address the question regarding the drip scope. Hmm. Okay. So, any more questions? Should we move to the next presentation? Um, so, um, I guess that's to um, Adam. Do you go to the, the, the RIP or? Yeah, it can either be me or it can be Bob. I don't care which. But I, I don't see your presentation. It's the identity claims one. Oh, okay. I don't think we have to. Okay. So maybe we're going to go um, with you first so you can finish your presentation this time. Yeah, mine should be fairly quick. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to remove the mask so you guys can hear me a bit better, hopefully. Um, all right. Uh, next slide, please. Daniel. Um, drip charter, just in case someone has not seen it, trustworthy internet local connect scenarios. So the overview. So there's been some discussion back and forth between me, Stu and Bob on uh, between editors on claim versus certificate. Uh, I think I wanna keep this to the list, but I wanna bring up that this discussion is going to happen on the list. Um, we chose claim originally because certificate had some connotation to it revolving around x509s uh Stu sent a email to the list earlier this morning and i believe karsten and hank and michael answered to that adding to that discussion so that's where that discussion is um the decision is in flux so that will be feedback to come to the next one um the identity claims are special to the UAS ecosystem um, for remote ID and it's binding stuff. 
Um, the possibility of a draft name change, I'm thinking changing it to identity proofs to try to encompass certain claims and not choose one over the other. I would like some comments on that, but we'll get into that once uh, people have read the draft a bit more and I get into details on it. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so changes since version 01. So the draft originally was all in uh, XML. I've switched it over to Markdown to make my life easier. And I've noticed significantly that a lot of the text was broken. So I updated a lot of the text. I basically took all of the text out of the document, put it in Word, and started rewriting it because it was just a mess. Um, as such, references were lost during the conversion. So if anybody reads it and thinks there should be a reference somewhere, please let me know. Um, I added some sections. Uh, I had read Bob's UAS RID document and found that he had a small form of what I call CXX. Um, I added his smaller form to my document, and I also added a section on registry provisioning, which we'll get into. Um, and I also generalized one of the certs into a, um, into a short form. Next slide. So this is the uh, CS CXX form. Um, it's a self sign on verified claim asserting a binding of an H HI to a given entity known as X. Um, and it's 116 bytes in length. It's basically the atomic unit that I'm using for all of these claims, proofs, what have you. And three of them are created um, during a provisioning, and you can see the listing there, aircraft on aircraft, operator on operator, and registry on registry. And it's kind of a subform. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is the uh, larger cert. Um, the larger cert is um, when we take two CXXs from different entities and bind them together to form a relationship with a start time and an end time. Um, they can range from 304 to 608 bytes in length, and they are generally a testing. Um, there are three forms of this, registry on operator, operator on aircraft, and registry on operator on aircraft, which is 608 bytes long, and uses uh, the CRR and COA as its two um, certificates within it. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so this is the uh, small registry on aircraft. This is the 200 byte uh, certificate that's used in broadcast remote ID, um, asserting the binding between the registry and the aircraft. This might be going through some changes. Me and Bob have had some discussions where Bob realized that the structure I was using has some replay attack um, possibility to it. Um, so this will be changing hopefully in version three. So I won't linger on this too much, but it's what we've been using up until this point. Uh, next slide. So I'm going to go over through the provisioning process. Um, this is based on work from the digital identities working group for the IATF under ICAO, which is just a word of acronyms and multi-level layers. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so. For ICAO, the manufacturer is kind of the start of the trust uh, uh, start of the trust chain. And it's where the manufacturer puts a key its initial key pair into the secure element of the aircraft. Um, note that the Manufacturer's um, certificate CMA sub zero, which could be an X509. It doesn't have to be a drip specific cert. The key point is that the ID, whatever it is, whatever the ID the manufacturer has chosen, is being bound to the manufacturer at that time and in a certificate. Uh, lots of text here. You can see the image in the top, seeing the relationships. Uh, next slide. So the registry provisioning is a, a little bit complicated. There is some question, open questions on this. This is what I've been thinking at the moment where the RRA and the HDA form 
a pairing together. How the RRA gets provisioned, I think, is out of scope. Um, but how we pass delegation down through and trust through it, I think, is important. And this is the generic way of just doing it. Just create certs and have signs against each other. Uh, note that after this point, an HDA, the registry is referring to an HDA. So um, for the operator, the operator creates a key pair, goes to the HDA, registers, creates its own cert, and there's some verification checking, um, some collision checking to see if there's points in DNS so that HIP resource record can be added. And then if it's successful, you get back certificates. Next slide. Ah, and Michael has put some stuff in the chat, I see. I think, maybe. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> discussion in the chat. Um, so aircraft provisioning has two different forms that we have seen between me and Stu discussing stuff from the uh, ICAO work and what we've been doing. Uh, this is the first one. This is the operator assisted form where the aircraft can't actually on its own connect to the registry. It doesn't have internet connectivity on its own. So there's this dance that happens where things are extracted and injected back and forth into the aircraft and sent to the registry. Um, I will l let the diligent student read this. There is some text. There's more succulent text in the draft. Um, this process, this is just a quick run through on what it is. Next slide. <clears throat> so the standard aircraft provisioning under ICAO requires that the aircraft be able to connect to the internet. So there's a token that's passed from the registry through the operator to the aircraft because there's a two-step two -step process. First, that the operator binds the aircraft to himself and tells the registry, I'm taking ownership of this aircraft. And then the aircraft saying, I'm using this identity for my work. Um, again, more text. Sorry that it's horrible. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so new details. So this is all to do's on my draft. Uh, Bob has brought up some timestamp considerations. The I've been using an expiry timestamp, and Bob has pointed out to me that that creates a replay attack possibility, and we should be using the current timestamp. Uh, the question I have to him and to the rest of the working group is, is there multiple versions of the forms where we add expiry timestamp or swap timestamps around and have them be different? Um, the offline self-claim that Bob is um, laid out in the UES RID, at least a cursory version of it, should be added to this draft, um, at least the first portion, the portion that's in parentheses, because the other portion is probably in the off draft when we actually implement this to avoid replay attacks. Um, Bob brought up an interesting point. How do you handle the provisioning of an aircraft when somebody takes a DJI drone, rips all the components out of it, and puts uh, their own stuff in it. Well, then how do they provision? You've lost a lot of pieces. How do you do that? And then the ordering of the CXY fields. Bob brought up that he didn't like the ordering in the CXY form. And so what I... For me, it's irrelevant because the signature signs across all the preceding fields. And so the ordering of those fields doesn't matter, but they should be fixed so that you know what they are. And I'm wondering if anybody has any comments on that once they read the draft. Next slide. I think it's my last slide. Yes, this is my last slide. So any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to do them. Read the draft. Help me out. Um, I'll be moving to the architecture in a little bit. So that's where I'm at, and it's getting loud here. So, um, the last concern, um, how to interpret uh, the order of the certificates. You're really Daniel strong. can't hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? 
broken up. Can you hear me now? No. Right, right. It's not clear. I'll be talking to the issues of the uh, replay when I go through the RID um, presentation. Uh, and Adam and I have to work this out. There's a slight difference between like the theory of these claims, assertions, versus when Adam gets the rubber on the road, on the off, what he's actually able to do in the off frame. So that's gonna be the almost what we can do in the off frame and then feed back in terms of the the theoretical um, structures that Adam's been working with in his uh, um, identity um, claims or, or proof drafts here. And my concern in terms of the ordering in the certificate, um, I will post that up to the list. Take what I, I send a private message to Adam, and I'll retake that that. Uh, that message and I'll post that to the list. Um, it was a little concern in terms of when somebody reads it, um, what is the uh, the intention of, of the, uh, the the claim? So uh, I will uh, uh, present that to the list and let's move on. It says as uh, Daniel just said. And by the way, Bob, I sincerely encourage you to send all the the reviews and the comments to the list. We are working group after all. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. It's, yeah, we've been having. Actually, I had sent the Adam had sent me before submitting it. He sent me a pre copy, and so he hadn't submitted it yet. And I sent the comments to what he what he sent me. He took some of those comments and he drafted them, and that's what he submitted. And some of the comments have not been in what he submitted. So I will take what he didn't do and I'll send that to the list. Okay, better like this, thank you. Uh, so I'm, I'm having a bit of a similar-ish issue to what Stu's been facing with the ARC and the requirements is that auth and the identity claims kind of meld together and I'm having a hard time teasing them apart but also have <laughs> not be like one document. That's where I'm at. So, so Adam, if I could uh, speak real quick, um, I just sent a response to the mailing list since you had suggested that some of the definitional stuff take place there. Um, what I wanted to just point out briefly is uh, in connection with the the identity in the medical space, some of the work I've been doing there. Um, I actually came up with what I called the identity Rosetta Stone. So I looked at some of the work that's been done with NIST, um, with the WC3 DIDs, uh, mixed in both uh, uh, GDPR. I, I looked at some of the ways definitions are being used across different standards and different frameworks, um, because sometimes the lawyers and the engineers are not on the same, singer from the same hymn sheet. Um, um, so I think that this may help in coming up with terminology um, to help refine that. So I just I, I forwarded that to the list. If it helps uh, move this discussion forward, great. Um, if not, choose to ignore it. Th thank you, Mikhail, for for doing that. I think that we can we can move to the next uh, to the next uh, slot. Uh, Daniel, uh, can you just please? Uh, Show the um, Bob slides, please. Bob, the floor is yours. I, I will go through this quickly. Um, as I say, it's an exhaustive, exhausting review of the updates, and we're gonna just fly through those and then a brief to-do. So let's go to the next slide. Um, fixed typos, um, especially caught up that hits our IPv6. I have initial section on the non-transferability of hits, which is kind of important, but I don't think it's adequate yet. Um, I ex um, expand remote ID authentication um, section 3.4, um, and then so I was able to take out the direct reference to drip off 
my goal, as I'll say at the end, is get is to make this document not reference anything but the requirements draft. Moving on. Um, security concerns. Um, I again, I, I changed the uh, the hit trust so that it's internally referencing and not needing the drip off draft. And I cleaned up some of the collision risk section. Next, so I'm going to fly through this. Um, Appendix B, which is the Harco hits, um, I've expanded text on the prefix so that it's going to be up to, in a sense to IANA, um, how small the prefix they may get, but 28 is the largest that we want. Uh, the other thing is I've added support for the 8-bit suite ID, which is in 7401, but not really um, um, used in 7401. Um, and, and I'll go into what, and, and the fourth part for discussion of the list is this allows an HDA to have its own domain of suite IDs, um, which could be used for, say, experiment, experimentation purposes, um, say in quantum, post-quantum use or something, um, but there's no provision for how to do post-quantum um, host identities. Uh, I don't know how to do that yet. Um, so. Uh, um, you want to look at what I've done here on the 8-bit support. Moving on. Um, the ORCID. Um, is this still a denim to ORCID v2 or is it ORCID v3? If it is ORCID v3, can it be buried in the drip grid or does it need to be its own separate document, separate RFC? Uh, that's again, that's almost going to be more for IESG than it's going to be for us here in terms of how to structure this. Um, this is a big change in the order of the fields, but I feel it's an appropriate change. I put the identity content together, the hit suite ID and the high hash, and I put the ownership together, the prefix RIA and HDA. So I've reordered this information. Um, we had some discussion earlier in the month on this order change, and I've implemented. This is important, and I believe this is the correct order. Moving on. Um, I fully parameterized the length of all fields, um, and this is from Alex, I pointed out the value to this. Um, so if I do measure the prefix must be 28 or less, no bigger than 28. Um, um, the, if the info equals the hit, this is not variable. So the ORCID, the info can be variable, but here for hierarchical hits, the info is always 32 bits. And the, and the OGA is only four or eight. Uh, it's, it's, it's parameterized, but it's either four or eight. Um, the ORCID encoding, I added the context ID, but just last night I realized that I put it in the wrong place. So that's gonna be a minor restructuring. Um, and I added the fixed length support as in ORCID V2, so that anybody implementing the code has here in one place how to handle both uh, RC7401 ORCID needs, as well as who we're doing here with hierarchical hits. They don't have to look at two separate documents to get it right. Moving on. Um, I've added more, as I just said, in the ORCID encoding. I have the back and decoding. I've added the, uh, the backward compatibility for the, uh, um, the hits per 7401 so that everything is in one place, not in two separate documents. Continuing. Um, in Appendix D, I, I had a, uh, uh, a batch covering source. I said that the C shake was a fixed output in this variable output, a uh, minor change on. Uh, this is the other big change. Um, I now have um, two examples of the self-claims, and these are examples. Um, they are loosely written, um, not something that you can really so much see how the things are laid together. Um, it, it, I've addressed a repaid attack um, on the old version that was in the last group. It was my bad, because when I designed this a year ago, I knew that I had to be careful that the signature was on the current time, not on some future time so that somebody can play this claim back um, themselves. 
but how do we balance the replay attack window against computing costs? Uh, so um, this is for the real self claims in the drip off draft, and Adam and I will be working together on this, as there are a number of mitigations possible there um, that we'll be working at. Um, let's go forward, let's keep on moving, gotta get, get done here. Next. Um, I have the offline self-claim. Um, please note how it's necessary to turn this inside out um, to address the replay attack. Um, and, and then I will have a little bit of the provisioning in there uh, and then include a text on how the server could do it. By the way, the 84-bit the self-claim, this is important for making it as small as possible and as little overhead as possible versus Adam's 116-bit self-claim. Moving on. Um, and Appendix F, I, I just added a nice little table of things that here's the size of your hash and here's what the collision's like. And next. And still to do. I referenced the crowdsource RID and the secure network ID C2 graphs. And I said, you know, should change be made to remove these dependencies. And I'm going to do that. Um, I want this document to stand on its own so we can say it is done. There are no dependencies. And, and people can implement it and work with it without, while we're having it uh, be completed, any last call or the rest of that. And I think that's it. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I think that we are, we are at the end of the meeting, but uh, we can still accept some questions or comments from, from, from the, um, the participant. Do you have any questions or comments and, and, to, uh, to Bob? I think any changes are just cleanup uh, and text. So this document is, a, now in my view, a complete document. Yeah, I, th I think we need more eyes, fresh eyes to review the document before we uh, we decide whether it is ready to, um, I would say, for the um, working group last call. I think that um, uh, in the past we have received some comments from Alex and so on. I, I, so, Alex, I don't know if you still have some, I would say, some issues with the, with, with the document or if you think that the, um, the solution approach it would, that is captured in this document is, I would say, uh, posing problem to you. And um, please feel free to um, to comment right now. Uh, Alex gave me some good comments before, and I welcome your view again, Alex. Have I gotten the, your your points handled? Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. This is Alex Petrescu. Um, I looked uh, closely at the presentation you gave, Bob. Uh, thank you for the presentation, and uh, I was happy to see a few points mentioned, like. Uh, uh, parameterizing uh, all fields within a uh, hit. Uh, uh, and, uh, but of course, I would need to read again the document. And um, I will try to do that soon and then uh, post on the mailing list about uh, these uh, modifications. But, uh, as you present it, I think it looks uh, good. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. In, any other comment to um, to to Bob? Uh, well, he he uh, he and an earlier Adam, I think, earlier presenter, they they talked a little bit about this uh, um, windows of opportunity for attacks, which are um, relatively crypto, more crypto concepts, and. Uh, um, uh, the, the signature based on uh, time and uh, of course it's, uh, it's, it's good things uh, uh, which but which brings in this uh, uh, this uh, necessity of uh, having synchronized time between most entities or a little bit of synchronization or here we talk about uh, uh, well we are not sure whether this, uh, all these entities are fully connected prior to being authorized, and uh, maybe these are these are things to to consider to 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 make sure when when we design secure things uh, that are based on time, 
that uh, these entities have the right time. And, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting this forward since I have noticed in practice a few times uh, these uh, problems with time and they happen at least twice a year when we change time, right? <laughs> we just change time with here. Uh, so it's good to consider these uh, having ID, the same time. Remote ID service pretty much mandates um, GNS, um, you know, global um, uh, navigation services that you know where you are, and that includes time. So most of these devices will have a very good sense of time. Yeah, well, uh, GNSS, okay, yeah, makes sense. Then, uh, of course, uh, GNSS is a generic word, and then uh, uh, if I'm sure that if you compare GPS time to uh, Galileo time, there might be some microseconds difference, which could be enough <laughs> of a window of, of attack. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's good. If, but uh, GNSS is not a, I think it's not a panacea answer. It's not an all an all-encompassing answer, just saying GNSS probably could not be, could be enough if for, for a, could be enough for a high level overview. But, um, but, yeah. but at least it's not the CPU's time drifting. Okay. <laughs> we all have dealt with that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. so, 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 so please, Alex, um, uh, please send the, the comments to the list so that Bob, I would say, can take care of, of them and uh, please uh, keep the discussion going on so that we can enhance this, uh, this document. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, sure. we, well, uh, we are at the end yeah. of, the, um, of the meeting. So thank you all for attending and for this uh, positive, I would say, um, uh, contributions. I think that we can adjourn and talk to you all during the next ATF meeting. Thank you. Bye.